made it home, wherever you may have been. Uh, truly, it's been a blessed day here. Can't complain about a whole lot, you know. The grand architect of the universe has been good to me, just as I've been good to myself. And that's sometimes we forget that we have to be good to ourselves. So I just want to welcome everybody in that's coming on today. Uh, I've been a, uh, I've been out of out of touch for a couple of days. Going well for the, as we continue to to journey on. You know, most of us do. We tend to uh, subjugate that with just being here. What I've learned recently is that talking with some brothers uh, from overseas, and and this is is I'm telling you, it's a, this this YouTube channel, man. You know what? I want to say first of all. I want to say thanks to everyone who subscribed. Thanks to the sisters who come on. Uh, thanks to the sisters who give calls. I big shout out to the sisters. Big shout out to the brothers of uh, of the craft. I just want to say how much I appreciate you uh, for subscribing to the channel and definitely calling in when you have the opportunity. So tonight's call in number is going to be 619-985-1184. So if somebody can post that up for me, I appreciate it. The number is going to be 619-985-1184. So come on in. Let's have this uh, uh, conversation about mainstream being a uh, world uh, wide fraternity because many think because you are not part of uh, various jurisdiction that you're not part of this thing that is called Freemasonry, but that is a lie. You are, if you have been initiated, passed, and raised, I don't care what jurisdiction you're in, you are a part of this thing we call Freemasonry in the order of the Eastern Star, if you've been initiated in Eastern Star. Now, granted, we all know that Eastern Stars are not around the world as the brothers are in various Lodges are all around the world as far as Masons are concerned, but the Eastern Star are primarily here in the United States and maybe a few other places, but they're here. And I, I won't uh, disown my sisters of the Order of the Eastern Star. I love them very dearly. And I uh, definitely want to encourage them to also travel outside of their jurisdiction to various other chapters, hold study sessions with them, get to know other sisters from various jurisdictions, and you know, and see what Masons, see what the order is really all about besides where you're at. I want to encourage you to do that. And also to the brothers, you need to leave this country and see Freemasonry from a different point of view. And I say that because we are so caught up in, in, in Americanized Freemasonry until we're, we're really missing out on the essence of Freemasonry. And I say that because in my own travels, this, this is what I know as a fact. Nobody can come and tell me anything different. I'm only 15 miles from the border of, uh, of Mexico. And having to sit in lodge with Grand Master from Mexico and different brothers from, from down in South America, is it is indeed a pleasure, as it is said, how good it is for brothers to dwell together in unity. And that is a fact. It's only here in the United States that we have these difficult understanding in really fellowship and in Freemasonry. I will say again, Masonry is a world fraternity, not just here in the United States. It is a world fraternity. And I, I, I encourage you, brothers, uh, to get out and travel beyond the United States and you will see this for yourself. And I'm just going to, I just want to pitch this to you. For some Masons, Masonry is merely a fraternity of fellowship. But for many, Masonry is a vital worldwide organization. They hope will bring peace and universal brotherhood to all mankind. To begin with this, masonry sees itself as a world fraternity. That's how we as masons see it. If you are truly that traveler, if you are truly that travel traveler, you see masonry from a world fraternity, not just a jurisdictional fraternity, not just a state fraternity, but a world fraternity. And when you begin to see it from that point of view, and stop letting people put uh, uh, chains on, on you and stop limiting you from where you can go, then it is beautiful, man. It's beautiful. I, I know that. It's a beautiful thing. So tonight, we're going to get in this thing. Is Why is masonry a world fraternity? Why is it a world fraternity? I mean, when you take a look at it, you know, and I'm going to share this with you. There is no such thing as a lodge masonry. Uh, uh, the Masonic fraternity is a single individual fellowship, which is neither 
divided nor affected by local or national boundaries. It has one set of landmarks, one set of degrees, one teachings for the worldwide fraternal order of Freemasonry. Listen to this again. There is no such thing as a large mason or large masonry. The Mason fraternity or the Freemason fraternity is a single individual fellowship with neither divided. We are neither divided. OK, nor does it nor is it affected by local or national boundaries. It has one set of landmarks. And here are the landmarks. One set of landmarks, one set of degrees, one teachings for all Masons. What are your landmarks? I'm not talking about the 25 landmarks that you and I so diligently hold to when we look into Mac's jurisprudence. There's another set of landmarks that cannot be changed. And if you have an idea, share them with me. And, and I, I'll tell you what they are. You know, yes, there is another set of landmarks uh, that most of us tend to forget. they are universal landmarks and they cannot be changed. One set of landmarks is the initiation, the passing, and the raising cannot be changed. Yes, they are landmarks. No matter where you go as a Mason, you're going to be initiated, passed, and raised. Now, there may be some similar, there may be some slight differences in the initiation, the passing, and raising, but they're the same. The end is the same. The end game is the same. So this is what makes Masonry a world fraternity. Not only that, the grips are the same. The greetings are the same. You cannot change those. And they are considered landmarks. Now, you may say, well, where did you get this from, Hawkins? Where, where did you get this from? I got this out of what you call the secret teachings of Masonic Lodges. It's a book. And uh, it's, it's written by, uh, here you go. Let me share that with you. There you go. Okay. It's a very interesting book. It, 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 it breaks down Freemasonry not only from a Masonic point of view, but also a landmark point of view and then a religious point of view because many of us tend to believe that masonry has nothing to do with, uh, with religion, period. But it has everything to do with it. And when I say everything to do with it, because it accepts all men of various faiths. So if it has nothing to do with that, then why do you have to believe in God in order to be a mason? This is why those who are the French right or the French uh, Mason, they they took the Bible off of the altar. So there is no Bible on the altar. And I understand that totally. You know, it is not that they're going against any landmarks. It is truly to say that the fraternal order is not going to hold any religious uh, boundaries upon members who want to become a Mason. Because Masonry is a, is a uh, philosophy and it's broken down to help a good man to become a better man. Now, we often say that like it's really, you know, but it's true. It is definitely true when you look at it from that point of view, when you really want to break down masonry and understand that it is a world fraternity. Not just your jurisdiction, but masonry is a world fraternity. And for those who travel, you, you know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> Brother Terrell, I know the landmarks. <laughs> well, so... When we take a, when we, most of us, when we take a look at the landmarks, we, we tend to think of landmarks as those 25 that are given, you know, as far as that is concerned. But now my focus is on those landmarks that transcend that. The landmarks I'm talking about has no boundaries. You cannot be enclosed by the passwords. Those landmarks are the way you enter a, a Masonic Lodge. These are all landmarks, and I know that we'll find that those landmarks I've just called out and I've just named are landmarks that cannot be changed. Those landmarks identify you as a Mason, okay? They're called ancient landmarks, as a matter of fact, okay? And the reason they are called ancient landmarks is because they, they, they transcend from time after time after time. They have never been changed. You could change a word here, you can change a word there, but you can't change the grip. You can't change the passwords. You can't change um, uh, 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 the, the 
the lodge, those are also landmarks. The way lodges are set up. Now, I would say this, there are some lodges I visit that are set up just a tad bit differently than uh, what we're used to here in the United States. And if you travel abroad, you know exactly what I'm saying. They are set up just a little bit differently. The West is moved a little to the right or a little to the left. It's not directly centered, sitting directly in front of the Wishful Master. It's somewhat moved uh, off to the left just a little bit. All right. And then some lodges I've gone into, there is a north in that lodge. Now, some of us say that there is no, you know, the north is supposed to be the darkest part of the lodge, you know, and there is no secret in that. So don't say that I'm sharing or saying things I shouldn't say um, that you can go and pick up a Masonic book and read that for yourself. However, uh, what I'm learning and finding out as I pick up different books, that's not necessarily true either, you know. That's not necessarily true either. And, and, and I want you to go and, and, and find it out for yourself uh, that the North is not as dark as we say it is. But however, here in the United States, uh, as Americanized Mason, we like to say that, but it's not. And, 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 and I found that to be kind of odd and strange because I hadn't seen it. And then when somebody presented it to me when I was there, I was like, oh, OK, really? And I and you know what? If I tell you about it right now, you, you some of you will be like, Hawkins, come on, man. So I can't really go that way right now. I can't, you know, and I know some some brothers out there said, no, you're full of it. No, I'm not. When you leave this country and go visit other lodges, you're going to find out some things that you do here is not necessarily done there. The things that don't change is the NPR. They don't change. There may be a little differences as far as the ceremonies is concerned, just a tad bit. But for the but for the most part, you can sit in any lodge and they can speak any language and you can watch and know exactly what's going on, period. It, it, it is what it is. And that's a fact. Uh, as I've stated in, before in some of my other videos, my brother-in-law, who's, who's from Haiti, is a French Mason. And they do things a little bit differently because all of them have swords or swords every last one of them so if you want to call in tonight that number is going to be 619-985-1184 if you want some of this conversation in regards to masonry being a worldwide fraternity not just where you're at and, and, and you know the thing is, is when you begin to see that from that point of view your jurisdiction matters but it doesn't matter in the in, in in from from the point of view of you're something you're part of something bigger than where you're at, and this is why most of us join the fraternal order anyway. It is because of its secrecy, and some may say, "Well, no masonry has no secrets." Well, you know what? We do, we do, but the ideal is most of us don't know what they are because we're too busy doing other stuff besides really indulging ourselves in the craft and its works and finding out about this fraternal order because. There's so much more to it than we have have even began to to really indulge ourselves in. And there are some who really get deep and they get into the esoteric side. They get into the other Masonic degrees. I've read that there are over a thousand different degrees in masonry. Now, how true is that? I don't know. That's just something I read. And could I believe that? The world is huge. And who knows? I mean... They have the snake degree here and here in California, there's a there's a auxiliary to Freemasonry and they call it, it's a snake degree that they do in the desert. It's an, it's an auxiliary degree, you know, and it's only for those master masons, you know, <clears throat> so I never heard of that until a few years ago. And they have their own. They have their dues cards. They have their own. It, it is something different from masonry, but it is an auxiliary to masonry. Think on that. And in order to be a part of it, <clears throat> you have to be a Mason. So it's, that's something to think about. But I'm going to share this with you. Masonry as a great order of men select, initiate, sworn, and train to make sweet reasons in, in the will of God, i.e. Masonry, prevails. Newton claims that Masonry will not become only one more fraction in a world of fractured and feud but that it is seek to remove the hostility which may raise from a social, national, or religious differences. 
I like that. That's what masonry tends to do. If you are truly uh, part of this worldwide fraternity, that it seeks to remove the hostility from social or national or religious uh, differences. It does because this is how masonry is able to take in individuals from every thickness of the fraternal order of Freemasonry. We can say whatever we want to say about it. That is certainly true. So once again, for those who are turning in to just want to say welcome to the show. And we're talking about Freemasonry being a worldwide fraternity. So let's remove diction and look at it from an individual point of view as you begin to travel in this thing called Masonry. Because we tend to forget that Masonry is as far as the east is to the west, as far as the heaven to the center of the earth. And, that, and if that is Masonry, and if that is your lodge, then why do we seclude ourselves to jurisdictions and just my state and this and that? If you feel that that is your lodge as an individual, then let's stop uh, uh, um, putting ourselves in boxes because you, you know, if you want to only travel within the box, you really are not going to enjoy uh, the master wages as you begin to travel as a Freemason. You, you're just not going to do it because masonry is bigger than that. And if you, and if you're not willing to see it for what it is, then you are truly, and uh, not just in my point of view, but you are truly missing out on Freemasonry and what it actually um, has going on. And, I, and and that is, like I said, that is the beauty of Freemasonry and what we do here. So if you want to call in tonight, 619-985-1184. Greetings there, Brother Lewis. Greetings, uh, Curtis. Welcome aboard. Uh, greetings, Brother Alex Fitzgerald. And I'm going to say this here. I've read some of the comments from uh, various brothers in regards to <laughs> this 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 YouTube channel, and it's sort of, it's sort of strange that they'll come on and make the comments, but then when I invite them on the show, then they they're out. You know, they don't they don't want to uh, they don't want to have that conversation. So if anyone out there who 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 think that they want to have the conversation in regards to Freemasonry, certainly you're welcome to call into the show. It is 619-985-1184. Don't be embarrassed. Don't think that somebody's trying to outsmart you or make you feel bad because we can all learn from each other. It is not that I know everything or you know everything. It is truly the fellowship of Freemasonry and what we are all about. It is truly based upon the brotherhood of love, uh, the brotherhood of man, the fatherhood of God, and charity and relief. And if you can't get down with that and you're calling yourself a mason, then you're truly missing the essence of it. Now, yes, all of our grand lodges have constitutional bylaws for which we all may abide by. And yes, some may feel that, oh, you're, you're a clandestine, I can't talk to you. But I would guarantee that your grand lodge, I would guarantee that in your obligation, it does not say Tony Hawkins or Tony Muhammad. It does not say John G. Jones or it does not say Modern Free or it does not say these various other grand lodges that are here to stay and not going anywhere. This simply says that a clandestine lodge is one that does not hold this charter or warrant under a grand lodge. That is the true definition of it. And I would like for us to start using words in their totality of what they mean and stop subjugating them and moving around them. Okay? And when we are able to do that, you get a lot more respect, you get a lot more understanding, and we have a better conversation. What ha happens now is that we're not able, we're better than this person. And when you are feeling that way, then this is how you're going to treat the next person, you know, and that's not necessarily good either. We got to be able to move on from there and realize that, you know, we, 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 can't, we, can't, we can't do that to each other no more. And like a brother told me once, crabs are in a bucket because they're not used to being secluded or put in a, a secluded included area. This is why crabs pull down the next crab that's trying to get up. Crabs are not meant to be in a bucket. So when they tell me that black people or individuals are like crabs in a bucket because you keep pulling each other down, that is serious. That is to me to say that we don't deserve to be in a bucket. You, no, crabs are not meant to be in a bucket at all. So you can, you can remove that stigma you know, and, and like I told my, I was talking with a, uh, some friends the other evening. I said, look, I only want to hang around successful people. If you want to come to me with the nonsense, then we can't, we cannot talk. We can't help. In regards to 
what's actually taking on right now. Because let me tell you, as as, as African Americans, as Indians, as people, you, you know, we, we have our social issue. I would use in regards to Freemasonry, uh, greater than be a part of. Because it is a, just as it says as an apprentice that you, you're going to occupy your mind with useful knowledge. And if you do not do that, then you're going to allow somebody else to uh, pour water into your glass and tell you that it's clean. <laughs> you catch that. You know, I don't allow people to pour water into my glass and tell me it's clean. I want to go get my own water, turn the faucet, get it out of the bottle, whatever. I'll decide whether my water is clean or not. In this thing we call masonry, a lot of times we rely on other individuals to say and to tell us. When I definitely encourage you and everybody else, sisters or brothers, to go and do your research, go pick up your own book, find out for yourself in regards to Freemasonry and how it's going to help you to shape in, uh, your life and those individuals that you want to be around. Everybody is not worthy to be a mason. Let's, let's just... Put it like that. Everybody is not ready for it. Everybody is not worthy. This is why it's important not to always bring your friends into the craft. Yeah, don't don't do, don't just look at to bring your friends into the craft because they can be the very ones that tear tear your lodge up. They can. You know the goals of masonry is to unite. Okay, the goals of Freemasonry is to unite. And if you think I'm lying, just just give me a call. If, if you don't agree with the goals of Freemasonry is to unite. You can hit me up and we can have the conversation, 619-985-1184. You know, it's kind of strange right now. And I know it's late on the East Coast and I appreciate you tuning in. If you're on the East Coast, Chicago, Miami, New York, um, if you're in the Carolinas or the Virginias, if you're in Mississippi, Alabama or Georgia or Texas, Tennessee, uh, Idaho, if you, Utah, if you if if you're on the East Coast now, I, I want to say thank you for tuning in and definitely sometimes send me a shout out. I appreciate it. You know, uh, uh, you know, I wasn't for sure if I was going to come on tonight, but I was like, I, I got to do this. I got to get it in. I got to get it in. What's up, Brother Maddox? Welcome to the show tonight. I hope you're doing well, my brother. It's crazy that even in the order, some of us have that Willie Lynch syndrome. Well, you know what? Here's where Freemason comes into play when you talk about the Willie Lynch syndrome. First of all, if you are into apprentice, when you indulge yourself in useful knowledge, then you're going to understand that Willie Lynch syndrome. You should. You should be able to pull that out and understand it. This is one of the things about people say, well, you know, I'm in the hood or I'm in the ghetto. Just because you may live in the hood or the ghetto doesn't necessarily mean you have to stay in the hood or the ghetto. What I'm clearly saying is that if you invest in the hood and ghetto, it's no longer that. It becomes a community. But most of us don't want to invest in the hood or the ghetto. We want to get out. But if you would turn around and invest in the same place that you want to get out of so dearly, you will find that you can re that you can earn more money by reinvesting in that. That's just a little tip for you. Think on that for a minute. If you would reinvest in the very place that you're trying to get out of, you can recoup your money. That's if you choose to do that. But most of us are trying to get out of the so-called hood or ghetto. It wasn't always a hood. It wasn't always a ghetto. It wasn't that way always. And we got to find out, well, we already know why it's like that and why we call it that. But we have to be able to move past that. And if we're not able to do that, then a lot of us are going to have a hood mentality or a ghetto mentality. And that's not something that we need to have when we're trying to progress in this thing called Freemasonry or the Order of the Eastern Star. Because it's bigger than that. But most of us, we get stuck. And why do we get stuck? You know, why do we find ourselves uh, uh, in, in a stuck mood, mode? Why is that? You know? I would say clearly, we find ourselves there because others have in, in imparted in us their attitudes, you know. So we have to be careful of, of those that are around us that are imparting their attitude into our spirit, into our soul, you know. And then we take and we 
we transfer that onto somebody else. We have to be careful of that. Greetings, Sister Jones. Welcome aboard. Okay. Welcome aboard. So, uh, Brother Washington, most of us like the comfort zone. That's why we don't go anywhere. Most of us would talk about Grand Lodges. This is that, that mentality trip, you know. But if I'm going to live in a ghetto, if I'm going to be in the hood, so-called the hood, then I'm going to invest and clean it up. Because like I said before, it wasn't always a ghetto and it wasn't always a hood. Okay, so when we see it from that point of view, then we have to be able to let our light shine. But most of us, as I've said before, take our light and place it under a bed. We do that because we don't want nobody to know because we don't want to be questioned, you know, and, and that's not what it's all about. We must, as Masons and as sisters, as the Order of Eastern Star, let your light shine. Don't be embarrassed that you are Mason or Eastern Star. If you are part of this great fraternal order or this sisterhood, then you know what it's all about. And stop telling and stop allowing people to tell you what it's all about. Oh, you're not high enough yet, so you don't really know. And I would say this, and I've said it before. Yes, there is some truth to that. There is, because most of us who are master masons only, no, we don't know what go on when you are 33rd, when you're in the Lodge of Perfection, when you are shining. You don't know because you haven't been initiated or past or whatever in those different degrees. So you don't know. But once you get there, you will know. <laughs> and that's the thing. You got to get there. And stop allowing people to uh, who are not part of the organization or the fraternity or the sisterhood to impart upon, upon you what they think, you know, what they read. You should be the one saying, look, I'm a part of the organization. I know what it's all about. You know, this is this once again, it goes back to tell you masonry is a world fraternity. It is a world fraternity. And I would say that only because of my experiences. What I know as a fact, not some truth. I'm talking facts. See, there's a difference between facts and truth. I have my truth. You have your truth. But when you deal with the facts, everybody come out on a level. Facts bring you on the level, and we most and most of us tend to forget about the facts. We want to based upon truth. Here's my truth. Here's what I read. No, what does the facts say? What does the facts say? Has he been initiated, passed, and raised? Is that a fact? Yes, it's a fact. Now it may not have been in your lodge or your grand lodge or wherever, but that person has been there. That's a fact. Okay, has she wine and Lambeth? As a member of the Order of the Eastern Star, is that a fact? Yes, that's a fact. Then she indeed is a, is a Eastern Star. Now, you may tend to disagree with that based on your ideology, based on your dogma, based upon what somebody has told you. But the fact is, is that that person is an Eastern Star. That person is a Mason. And you can't take that away from them. Once they have committed themselves, once they have been initiated, passed, and raised. So masonry itself is a world fraternity. It is just not limited to your jurisdiction. And when we tend to see it that way, then we can grow from it. You know, I, you know, just like when I talk with Brother Freemasonry and Law. Yes, I know he's part of co Freemasonry, but he's still my brother. Period. That's an individual that I respect. He's still my brother. Just like I know some, uh, I know some brothers from Modern and Free, and some people may say, "Well, Modern and Free, you know, the way they was organized and the way they're structured, how can they be Masons?" Well, that's not my structure. But if that brother has been initiated, passed, and raised, that individual, according to their rites of ceremonies and according to the Masonic rites of ceremonies, then that person is a Mason. You know, now I don't have to. Know Necessarily say I want to accept that, but the facts are that that person is a Mason, regardless if I accept them or not. 
It's just the facts. I'm not talking about truth. I'm talking about facts. And a lot of times we want to say this is truth. No, let's go beyond truth and look at some facts. The fact is, is that masonry is a worldwide fraternity. It is just not limited to your jurisdiction. Facts are, if you travel as a mason, I guarantee you that you're going to come across other masons in this journey. And they're going to treat you with respect. Regard. That's a fact. We're going to move from truth to deal with facts tonight. So if you want to call in tonight and have that conversation, that is 619-985-1184. The lines are open. So please hit us up and let us know Let us know what you feel, all right? Let us know what you feel. So let's look at this thing again. As I said before, there's no such thing as a single individual fellowship which is neither divided nor affected by local or by national boundaries. It is not. So we have to we have to rethink some things, okay, uh, in this journey we call masonry. Because some of us are so caught up in our jurisdiction to we tend to miss out on the beauty of the very thing that we say we enjoy and love. We do. Hey, to all the Elus tonight, big shout out to the Elus tonight. Oh, yeah. Big shout out to the Elus tonight. You know, people talk about masonry ruling, ruling the world. I don't, you know, from what I know, it is not about masonry ruling the world. It's about masonry uh, Yeah, I, I'm trying to see what's going on here. I'm in some, woof. Yes. Yeah, it's, ah, it's a mother, man. I'm telling you. It's not good. Bear with me. Hold on. Make a brother lose where he's at. I know that. So hopefully you're back with me right now. So I'm hoping that you're back with me. Uh, I was having a serious moment there with a lot of buffering. And no, it's just not you, Brother Lewis. It's not. So we're going to move on from there, and I'm hoping that everything is kind of worked this way out. Again, if you want, I just want to say I appreciate you this. On June the 13th through the 16th, we're having our annual grand session. So late in that grand session, you let me know. You hit me up. If you have my number, you hit me up, and let's have a great time. Uh, uh, coming to our session. Our session will be held in San Bernardino, California, and I will definitely get that information to you if you want to come fellowship with the members of John G. Jones Grand Lodge of California and the Order of the Eastern Star Garden Eden Grand Chapter. We'll be holding our grand uh, our grand session in San Bernardino, California. Woo! It should be hot, nice, and warm. Uh, we have quite a quite an event coming up. So last year I had uh, Grandmaster. Uh, Stephen Smith from John G. Jones Grand Lodge out of Mississippi that came. He came on in. I did his installation for him uh, last year at our session along with his deputy grand master. So definitely if you want to attend this session, let me know. You're certainly welcome to do so. So let's get back into this thing tonight. Uh, is masonry a worldwide fraternity? And I would say yes, masonry is that worldwide fraternity. But we as masons must begin to appreciate what it is. I guess you two don't want the good information. <laughs> it is a secret society. All we ask is trust. Certainly, you are absolutely right. Masonry is a secret society, but most of us say it is a society of secrets. That's just a play on words. But a lady uh, over the road trucker now sitting in the east. <laughs> okay. I've met some awesome brothers and sisters throughout my travels. Now I work at the Diesel Driving Academy, teaching people how to drive. Well, Brother Daryl Brown, what's up? Albert Jackson, good evening, Brother Hawkins. And hello to deal with the fact that we are a world fraternity, not just by your jurisdiction or your state, Grand Lodge, or whatever. Ever, but masonry itself 
And this is why, once again, I've said it over and over again. It is very important that you save your pennies, your quarters, your dimes, and travel outside of your jurisdictions, beyond the borders of the United States. And I guarantee you, you're going to see masonry different than what you see here in the United States. And some people are going to get upset at you at the mere fact that you're doing it. And that's the craziest thing. The mere fact that you choose to go travel outside of your boundaries. There are individuals in your own jurisdictions and beyond are going to get upset at you. But how can you say you're a Mason? You never went nowhere beyond your own jurisdiction. How can you say that? And that's the thing we're talking about. Masonry being a world fraternity, not just in your jurisdiction. And that is the beauty of Freemasonry. And I like to give... Um, a shout out to all the brothers who travel beyond the borders of, of their own country. And I know quite a few brothers who are in the service. They see masonry, they have seen masonry different than what we view masonry here in the United States. And that's, 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 a, that's an issue. That is truly an issue for me. You know, how can you travel the world and see masonry and then come back here and have a stigma about your own brothers? You know, that I, that's just how I see it, you know, and that's the beauty. This is why it's important that a sister who winds the lambs of life in the in the five points of the order. And that's what you're doing. You're winding the lambs of life, sister. And you're saying that you will run to that sister's aid with your purse. You will comfort her in her sorrows. You would. You, there are things that you say that you would do and you must. So adhere to the things that you say you would do. They, it stretches beyond your chapter, sisters. Brothers, there are things that we say we would do in, in all three degrees. It stretches beyond our lodge. It stretches beyond just those who are in my lodge. If I know that that brother or that sister is truly who they say they are, and I, I respect them for who they say they are, then and I'm going to go beyond that which I would do necessary to be able to construct Freemasonry. I thank you for having some awesome conversations on your program, informative, enlightening, and share thoughts. I love this organization. I'm not necessarily saying put this organization before your family. You shouldn't put anything before your family. Let's have an understanding of that. But I'm clearly saying that this organization, as we know it, has a bad rap sometimes. It gets a bad rap. Rap, because some of us put it in a bad light. We do that to the organization. Then we wonder why we don't have the membership that we once had or why it don't have the glow that it once had. That is because of what we bring in. We got to stop bringing in rift raff into the fraternal order. We got to stop that. Sister, we got to stop bringing in those we trying to, mm, you got to stop bringing them in. You know, you, we have to look at who we're bringing into this organization. Because everyone is not worthy to be a Mason or an Eastern star. They're, they're not. I don't care if they are my best friend. You, you know? Oh, yeah, we can sit and we can talk. But there is you, but you gotta have a certain and, and, and quite naturally, this is what happens a lot of time, you know? This is exactly what happens. So I would encourage you to when you are looking at individuals who want to become a part of your chapter, your lodge, go to their homes, see what their lifestyle is all about. You know, check them out because like I said, everybody is not worthy. And we must understand the landmarks of the Order of the Eastern Star once said and still do say that you have to be a mother, a daughter, a wife, a sister, okay? A widow. A widow is someone who was married to a master mason OK, but it all boils down to your to to you being part of the fraternity through family. OK, that's simple as that. But now we have this thing. We, oh, well, I'm going to vouch for you. I'm going to adopt you. You know, even I at one time have used that. You know, a sister wanted to be a part of the Eastern Star. And I, I thought that she would be a perfect fit or maybe she may be a good sister. Or I'm going to vouch for you. I'm going to adopt you into this thing. But the landmarks clearly says in order for a sister or a lady to be an Eastern star, sister, mother, wife, daughter, or widow. 
That's what it says. That's a landmark of the order of the Eastern star. It truly is when you look at it. You, we all have heard of, of that. We have all heard and most of us have read for ourselves that in order to be in this eternal order, it has to be in your family. My, one of my sisters reminded me of that the other evening. We was having a great conversation. And she reminded me of what it is to be a Mason and Eastern star. She reminded me. She said, Brother Hawkins, this thing that we're a part of, it, it, it means something. But what we've done is we've brought in riffraff. You, you had to be, it had to be family oriented and you had to have people that was in your family in order to be a Mason or an Eastern star. But now we're just bringing in everybody. And this is what we get. We get people who are not willing to conform or, or, or to, to, to take on the, the, the position or be, be respectable to the next man. We bring on people who are not willing to, to adhere to the landmarks. Not just those 25, but the landmark that clearly says that these things don't change. Be it whether it's the five points of fellowship for you, Master Mason, into apprentice, fellow craft. It, it can be any of those things. Those landmarks don't change. Yes, they are landmarks. <clears throat> oh, what's up? Mar All right, Fletcher, what's up? Thanks for the book recommended. You gave a while back signs and symbols of oh yeah 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 okay okay when you got it then hey sis how you doing <laughs> all right sis welcome aboard tonight 384 i am woman sometimes you have to judge even if you don't want to absolutely and see this is the thing People are afraid to judge because the same way you judge someone else, you shall be judged. I'm not afraid to judge. I'm not. I judge somebody in a minute. That's me. Because see, here's the thing. You must be willing to take on the same. Like I said, if you're going to judge someone by the standards that you set, rest assured you're going to be judged by those same standards. And if you can hold up, you'll be okay. Don't be afraid to judge. We all judge. If a, if a female walk into a room a certain way, she cut it a little different, we're going to look and we're going to judge. If a brother walk into a room a certain way, he shaped a little different, the sisters are going to judge. That's just what we do. But you can't be afraid to judge if you're going to judge righteous. You know, if you want to judge the right way, there's nothing wrong with judging. We all do it. We all do it. God even judges. Oh, well, you're not God, but I am a child of God. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, we can go a little deep on that. Oh, for sure. We can get down with that. We, can, we can't be afraid, you know. For too long, we were set in the shadows and allowed things to happen. Like today, I will share with you my evening. Today, at the city count, at the uh, supervisor board meeting for the city of San Diego, for the county of San Diego, as a matter of fact, the states so or second to uh, uh, Los Angeles. However, so I'm at the Board of Supervisors today and I'm, I'm dressed like this. The unique thing is, is that I see, I see Judge, uh, I think his name is Judge Smith, is sitting over at his computer and he's typing. I walk over to Judge Smith. Hey, Judge, how you doing? It's a pleasure seeing you again. He looks up. He's like, hey, how you doing? It's, it's a pleasure seeing you again. And this is the thing we have to remember is how we carry ourselves. You can't be out just swinging and doing. See, if I'm going to tell you I'm a Mason, I'm going to carry myself like a Mason. Even if I tell you I'm a Christian or a Muslim, I'm going to carry myself as such. Okay? I'm not going to just be out just doing wild and out. I'm, no, you're not going to. No, we're not going to do that. Not at all. Not at all. People say Adam was the first Mason. No, don't get caught up in that. Adams was never a Mason. None of those fictional guys that's in the Bible don't mean to uh, ruffle anybody's feathers when I say that, but none of those people in the Bible were Masons. Click, they were not, none of them 
were Masons. We may use them to give examples of how Masons should be and act and carry themselves or even sisters, but none of them were Eastern stars. None of them were Masons. There is no fact to that. I'm not talking truth. I'm talking fact. Now, we can say they're buffering again. Oh, stop. Okay, back. So, no, no, none of them were. Let's, let's have that conversation. Is Mason an individual or collective journey? Masonry is an individual journey. I'm able to travel in foreign countries and receive master wages as such. It doesn't say that I'm taking 10 or 15 other guys with me. That is just that simple. No, Masonry is an individual journey. That's the beauty of it. See, because I may be able to travel outside the boundaries, you may not. That's the difference. You may be able to travel further than I can, and I may not never get there. That is truly one of the differences. So no, masonry is an individual journey. Now we may go different directions, but the journey is the same. This is what puts all of us on the level. You know, it truly puts all of us on a level. So the night call in number, I got a little while longer. The night call in number is 619-985-1184. So if you feel that you want to call in and have a conversation with me tonight, certainly you're welcome to do so. Once again, welcome to the John G. Jones Show. I want to just, oh, Jesus wasn't Christian. Oh, no. I never said that Jesus was a Christian, brother. Oh, no. I'm not going to. I'm not going to going to touch that one. <laughs> I'm not going to touch that one. No, Jesus was not a Christian. So let's have an understanding. Not at all. As simple as that. That's not even something you want to just really get into. Once again, big shout out to the Elus tonight. If you're Elu, I want to send you a big shout out with the Yod. You know, you know what the yard stands for, right? Think on that. So, as we move on tonight, I want to recommend this book right here. The Secret Teachings of Freemasonry in the Lodge. It's a great book. Now, it's a great read, too. It ain't for everyone. I, I, <laughs> I would tell you that this, this book isn't for everyone. It's not. It gets pretty deep on some issues. Uh, as far as religion is concerned, it does. You know, uh, if you're not, not able to separate the two, then it's, it's not a book that you want to really uh, get into. And some things in here I don't want to touch because it is it may upset some of you. And like I always say, when you're going down a rabbit hole, please drop some breadcrumbs so you may find your way back because masonry can take you that direction. Okay, so if you have any questions for me tonight, you can post the questions and you can call in. I got about five minutes left for the show tonight. I want to thank you for holding on and staying with me through the buffering because that was kind of crazy. Foam died. Yeah, Adam wasn't a Mason, but the point is that people are all trying to find the same truth in similar ways. That is the, absolutely. Who is Nimrod? Hmm. Nimrod. Well, uh, you know what? I can't touch on that right now because I hadn't read the Bible in about maybe a few months. And I'm not going to even sit here and say, oh, yeah, this is who Nimrod was. I'm not going to do that to you, nor am I going to do that to myself. So if you want to call in and talk about Nimrod, we can do that, too. Twelve zodiacs that sit around the. <laughs> oh, you want to go there tonight. Martin Evans, what's going on with you? Oh, you want to do the 12 zodiacs, huh? 12 hours in a day, huh? The center dial being that representing the sun. Ooh, we, the 12 planets, which we believe that there's a 13th planet, something to think about. That, that can get deep in itself because most of us think we're traveling east when we're actually going west. I had to even be schooled on that one. What happens to being yourself, illuminating an imaginary man in a book, in a childish? What happened? We all grew up. <laughs> That's the truth. You know, nothing happened with you being yourself, but we grew up. 
And in the fact of growing up, we allow people uh, to influence us in such a way to where we look at people differently. We don't look at people as being, uh, uh, if, if you're a Mason, you should look at, you should look, you consider all Masons on the level, but we don't do that. So we all grow up. But in the process of growing up, if you are a Mason, I've said it again, I say it till I can't say it anymore. You should occupy your mind with useful knowledge. Okay? And then you're going to take and apply that knowledge. So when you are a fellow craft, when you are a fellow craft, when you apply that knowledge, it's going to help you to spring forward. So when you are a master Mason, you can reflect upon a well-spent life. That's how you break that thing down. See, a lot of people don't want to get into it from that point of view. But if you, uh, uh, here in the United States, there's we have the Bible uh, and the Quran open on certain scriptures as you're being initiated into this thing. But I would say Ecclesiastes is, is one of the most important books belonging to a master mason if you are if you're going to use the Bible. And if you're going to use the Quran, there's another the scripture which is very important too like one brother said well i'm a muslim and i can't be a mason i don't know who lied and told you that you know it's because of their faith he said he said that he couldn't be a mason and be a muslim because they're sworn not to have secrecy i don't i i, I you know that's that's a whole nother story it truly is pha main argument is that we are fake masons well-centered people want us as black people not to come together because the craft is designed to build and tear down if we are ever to come together. Well, you know what? DJ, well, you, the, the thing is, is that we have to be, we have to grow up sometimes. You know, we have to look beyond the Prince Hall, John G. Jones, modern free international factor. When you grow up, when you mature in a when you mature in Freemasonry, that's no longer an argument. Really, it's not. It's not even about uniting and coming together anymore. When you grow up, now see, I will use myself for an example. I once believed that as a Mason, yeah, we should all get along. Yeah, yada yada. Let's you know, let's build bridges and not walls. I've 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 even done a, I've even done a lecture on that. But as I've grown up in masonry, as I matured as a mason, I, those that that's small potatoes now. Whether somebody look at me as a mason or not, that's small because I know. That's when you become when you when you begin to know, and enjoy masonry. You go where you're respected. You go where you are wanted and needed. I don't go no place where I'm not respected. I don't go no place where I'm not needed. I don't go no. I, I just don't do that. I don't. I, I can't do that to myself. So, I, I I I remove myself out of arm's way. I always go where I'm accepted and respected. Always. If you send me an invitation, I tell you I'm gonna come. I'm gonna come. Now, if you withdraw that invitation and tell me I can't come. Or you don't want me, I expect for you to give me a reason why. And if you are not man enough to tell me why, then you know what? You was never man enough in the first place. It's just simple as that. If you ever send a brother an invitation to come visit your lodge, and then you withdraw the invitation, and you're not man enough to tell him why you withdrew the invitation, you was never man enough in the beginning. See, you were shucking and jiving anyway. So, you know, this this is this is an important thing you have to understand about masonry. So, you know, like I said, I go where I'm welcome to go. I go where people invite me and I travel and I do my thing. Who is Eli to a Mason? I don't know who is Eli to a Mason. You're gonna to have to help me out with that one. What they find is that the truth, and the truth is what we as humans continue can't handle. Ooh. Yeah, we can't handle facts. If if somebody gave us some serious facts, we couldn't handle it. You know, I'm, I, I understand that you said truth, but I'm looking at something from a fact point of view. Facts, facts only. Hard 
or something I can touch, something I can grab, something I can put some things on, you know. And you're right. People can't handle it. They they really can't. We have brothers that are Muslims in our lodge. So do I. But you will find that individuals I've read in, in some of my own posts, the individuals say, well, you know why I can't, I can't, I can't be a Mason. It's against my, it's against being a Muslim. I'm like, I don't know where you read that at. I don't know where you read that at. But I'm going to say this. Uh, John G. Jones Grand Lodge of California, ain't you free and accept the Masons? We were um, embarking upon something that was going to be huge. But it fell through. However, how I couldn't make the announcement. I, I could not make the announcement. And I, I, I made the announcement earlier this year. I think it was around February I made the announcement. Uh, but it fell through. However, that has picked back up. And when we when we do what we're going to do, when it happens, it's going to, man, I'm telling you. What we're about to do right now is bigger than being recognized by uh, by the Grand Lodge of England. It's bigger than being recognized by the State Grand Lodge. It's just huge what we in this jurisdiction is about to do. And only a few people know it, and that's me, my Grand Master, and my Deputy Grand Master. I'm just making the announcement. What we were going to do earlier this year, back in February, that has not picked back up. Talks are now open, and it's, it's going to, yeah, we're going to shock the world, baby. We're going to shock the world. That's for real. And see, that's the thing. People, my brothers and my sisters, we got to we gotta look at masonry as a world fraternity, not just a, and just not here in the States. You got to look at it from that. My grandfather, Stanley, William Frazier, illustrious, had our four cornerstones. Oh, did he? He did four cornerstones? Oh, wow. Knocking the door would be open. Oh, that's for sure. There's going to be some acceptance in Florida. It's happening. There's a lot going on. I would say that. So, Brother Joseph, what's happening in Florida? I remember you talking about it a few months ago. You said it was going to hit hard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bruh, it, let me tell you, I would say this, I would say this, uh, cocaine blitz, it fell through, but the talks never, the talks never stopped. There was just the idea that the individual at the time uh, was pretty busy, but now the talks are back on. The idea is, is that once this is, is once this has been accepted, can we get there in time enough to make it happen? Or if the person is on this side of the country, can we get to him to make it happen? And when we do, it's going to be awesome. I, I'm very proud. I'm very happy. And I cannot wait. It's just that simple. And I would say this before I get ready to log off tonight. That, like I said, this is bigger than being recognized by the Grand Lodge of England. Is bigger than anything I've ever experienced in my life in Freemasonry. It's just that huge for me and for this jurisdiction. If we pull this off, no, when we pull this off, and it's going to happen, and, and, and it's going to happen, when we pull this off, boom. That's all I got to say. Shakalaka boom boom, baby. We going to have a Man, it should have happened a long time ago. It really should have. But I don't think anybody had the balls enough to do it. But, but in talking with my grandmaster and talking with some individuals that I knew, I said, I wanted to do this. And they said, OK, if you can make it happen, do it. And so they said, yes, this person would be willing to to do it. So if they're willing to do it and make it happen. I'm all aboard. I am all aboard and it's going to happen. It's just a matter of time and the letter is being written now and and I'm I'm proud. I'm proud to be a member of the Ancient Free and Accepted Masons. Um period. And and you know what? I'm going to say this here. 
I don't care what jurisdiction you're a part of. Take care of your jurisdiction. Be proud of your jurisdiction. You know, lift your jurisdiction up. Period. Be proud of it. Lift it up. Stop allowing people to come in to your jurisdiction. I don't care what it is. And tearing it down. No. It's yours. Take care of your home. You know? Take care of it. Hate the physical, this world, but you, a God, then, the, then that human reality doesn't phase you. Does masonry teach you to be a God? Because we really are gods, but we were told we are human. Ooh, we. <laughs> Faulkner, you need to call in to the nice show, bro. And I'm going to tell you this here. When people don't understand your post that you just put out, then they have missed truly the function. They're, they, they, they've missed, they're missing it. You know, they are. They're truly missing it. And I'm going to agree with you on your post you just put out there. I'm going to agree with you uh, 110%. I have no doubt of what you said is a fact. We've been told we're only human. That's what we've been told. You know, if we was taught that we were gods, we'd start acting like gods. But we've been told we're only human. Oh, you're not perfect. Who told you that you were not perfect? See, somebody lied to you. Because if you're going to be a Christian, you're going to follow the Christian way of life. You're going to follow the Messiah, or Joshua, Yahweh, him. If you're going to follow that individual, that person said to be perfect. Be ye perfect because I am perfect in my father. So who lied and told you that you couldn't be perfect? I'm just saying if you're going to do that. I'm Brother Fitzgerald. This is the first time I've ever called you live. I am in the military and been overseas for two years, but I watch your videos all the time. Really appreciate you, Brother. Brother Fitzgerald, I appreciate you. Thank you for tuning in tonight and uh, hit the like button, subscribe, tell somebody about the, uh, about the channel. And you know what? We're going to keep it moving. And it's all about the fellowship. It's all about the brotherhood. It's all about the sisterhood. And I don't know why we can't see that. I don't know why. Why we can't grasp that because once again masonry is a worldwide fraternity it is just not limited to where you at and when you mature into freemasonry when you grow up and understand that then this bickering this this who's regular irregular all of that's going to be nonsense it really is when you begin to grasp freemasonry that Irregular clandestine thing is going to go out the window because you're going to understand that mason where you're at. You're going to be able to grab it. You're going to really travel and enjoy Freemasonry. Forget those who say you can't come visit their lodge. For forget them. Okay? Just don't even worry about them. All right? As a matter of fact, just blow the damn bridge up. Don't even have the conversation. Just blow it up. Leave it alone. Okay? Focus on those things that's going to help you to develop to be the best person you can be. You're going to enjoy masonry, period. Oh, brother, you said, what's the deal, my, okay, what's the deal? My ancient free and accepted masons and my Prince Hall brothers. There's no deal no more. There's no cards on the table to deal anymore. There's no... There's no talk. There's no nothing. That that's a dead thing. It it to me, you know, and I'm only gonna speak for me. I can't speak for everybody. That's a dead thing. Because I'm looking at masonry now from a worldwide fraternity instead of just a local United States sort of thing, you know. That's like I said before, when you mature in masonry, you don't see it from that point of view no more. You don't. You understand why you can travel in foreign countries and receive master wages. It's an individual thing. It don't say that my grand lodge travels to foreign. It says, as a mason, I'm able to travel. It, it's an individual thing. We keep, as I once did, keep putting things on our, on our jurisdiction. It's not a jurisdiction thing anymore. It's not. Let me see. I'm a real proud Muslim Freemasonry. 
people who say Muslim can't be Freemason don't have a clue. The, I, bruh, I agree with you. I, I, you know, I know that you and I have had that conversation before. What cornerstone I heard before my mother passed as well. Huh. What's the number I'm going to call in? I have some deep questions and thoughts that a lot of people won't overstand. That's why most lodges see people of, of sheep going through the slaughter. So tonight call in number, I'm going to get that to you. Tonight call in number is going to be 619-985-1184. That's going to be the, tonight's call in number. And we can have that conversation. What's the difference between Freemasonry and the Illuminati? Well, <laughs> that's going to be part of the conversation, too, if you want to be part of the conversation. Illuminati. Okay, so the Illuminati once was part of what we call Freemasonry, but to illuminate means to enlighten or knowledge. Okay, that's the truth behind the Illuminati facet. But when you think of Illuminati today, you think of blood sacrifices, you think of a whole lot of crazy stuff that you probably read on the Internet. And that's not part of Freemasonry at all. Okay. So as far as that is concerned, that is totally separate from Freemasonry today. Okay. And and I and I and we can go a little bit deeper than that because people want to talk about the Illuminati and the effect. See, I'm gonna say this here. When you think when you think of the Illuminati as one may think in the music business and, and the show business, that's a whole nother spectrum. That has nothing to do with the, with the Freemasons, but I will tell you this. There is an initiation right, okay? Let's have some clarity on that. There is an initiation part, but it's nothing like being part of the Freemasons. I, I'll leave it at that. God made man and woman in this image. Of course, but, but the thing is, uh, Brother Lewis, we can sit here and say that, but most of us don't want to really get on it. Hello and welcome to the show. How you doing, fraternal greetings, brother Tony? This is brother King Musa. Hey, King Musa, what's up, my brother? How you holding up tonight? Oh man, I'm blessed, man. Highly favored, not complaining, you know. Oh, look at you talking that Christian talk. <laughs> hey, man, I've been around my mom all week. It was <laughs> Man, I was about the only to, person I take blessings from. Hey, bro, I was about to log off because I, you know, uh, I've been buffering a lot, but but for the last fifteen minutes, I've been good. Talk to me right now. What you got? So uh, I was seeing the, 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 the debate about uh, can Muslims be Freemasons is in the comments. Uh huh. Um, only thing that that, that like I, I like to uh, always stress uh, is that people. Because people who hear me talk about Islam think I'm a Muslim because I know so much about it. Uh -huh. Even though uh, I was raised Muslim, so of course I'm going to know the necessary uh, essentials and teachings of Islam, the Quran, Sunnah, and Hadith. Like, I'm going to know that. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, as far as like Freemasonry, if I was to go to the downtown Islamic Center in Chicago with a Masonic lapel on me, uh -huh. they would ask me to remove it. Really? Yes, they would, because when you come into Al Asqa, which is the which is the, the mosque, um, the way that you're doing uh, when you go to do like Juma and stuff, mm -hmm. uh, cannot wear anything else that shows devotion to anything outside of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, because according to uh, Islamic scholars, Freemasonry seek to destroy Al Asqa Mosque in order really? to rebuild Solomon's temple. You know what mosque they talking about? The Dome of the Rock. Right, right. So they say that no Muslim could technically truly be a Freemason if they wish to destroy the Muslim mosque to rebuild Solomon's temple. But that's which not... Which they say he built with jinn. But... So it's a whole different religious uh, aspect behind why they feel like a, a real Mukmanan would not be... A Mukmanan is a devout Muslim. 
if you're not a mukmana, you're not a Muslim, according to Quran. So you have to be a person who is attended to the principles. And you said that earlier. You said if you're a Christian, if you're a Muslim, if you're a Jew, it's certain things you adhere to. And the things of, of about the Quran, the Quran don't specifically say, obviously, you cannot be a Freemason. That's not what it says. But it tells you that you should not be a to uh, other things outside of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Repeat that. So it, it doesn't specifically go into detail and be like, oh, the Quran says in specific in this verse, you can't do this and you can't do that. Uh -huh. in, in particular, it, it's, it's like understanding that this temple, al Asqa is one of the most important temples in Islam. And in order for Solomon's temple to be rebuilt according to the mythology of Muslims, that temple has to come down first. Well, because that temple has to come down first that's the only way they can rebuild solomon's temple and this is what they teach in the mosque muslim wow. imams and ulema see this is the problem that i have with brothers who don't practice islam and arabic they don't learn the culture of Arabic. i mean of, of islam islam mm -hmm. is birthed out of the palestinian uh Quraysh culture of the prophet muhammad that's where that come from so when people say you can they don't know what they're talking about because they're not they're not true adherence to the Quran. A true adherence to the Quran knows that the, the the God of the Quran is more jealous than the God of the Bible. Hold on, I'm gonna I'm gonna add another caller. Hold on, okay? Okay. Hello. Oh hey. Um I'm calling A regarding the show. Yeah, hold on, okay? Oh, uh, hold on just a second. Okay, go ahead. What's your question? Yes, sir. Um, my name is Sheldon, folks. Um, you me um, fast some of my comments and everything, but I um, a few questions about your beliefs on the Bible or the Quran, basically, like from my perspective, I truly feel like the Bible, well, not feel, I know, based on what I've read and what I've studied, that the Bible, the Quran, all the books that were quote-unquote written to give us closure and a pass the tape, like uh, a good pass the tape, basically, are those books all made up? Like, they're not real, supposedly? Like, I'm questioning you this from your own opinion. Like, what do you think or know like regarding uh, what's really true or what's really not true on the bible the Quran, are they all made like made up okay i'm gonna give you my my perspective from what i've read and then uh brother uh king musa you want to go first is that all right okay um uh, in my opinion um i just uh i like the way you worded it when you said uh what's true about these paths um there's a word in Arabic called Tariq, which means the path or to the consciousness oneself in darkness. Uh, so it's like, it's one of those things where like, when you read the Quran, you're going into a state of peace. That's why they consider uh, the darkness, the word that they use Tariq is usually in association with meditation. Because if you understand Zoroastrianism, if you understand uh, Brahmanism, you understand the birth of the Judaic doctrine and why Hindus respect Abraham as much as they do because they believe Abraham was a guru that went into that land and taught them that. They don't believe that, that uh, this is the Hindu perspective. They don't believe that Abraham was actually a divine prophet that was sent by El Alion or El Elo or Yahoah. They don't believe that. They believe that, that he came out of the... Um, from across the Tigris Euphrates, and he came out of out of Sumeria into what they call modern day Israel, and he brought a different type of doctrine out of the land that he came from. So to ask if if a, if a text, a sacred text, a, a value of sacred law, any of that is true in its origin from beginning to end is impossible. No scholar, no no scholar of any religious doctrine can give you an exact origin of any of these texts and tell you, no matter how much research they've done on the field or on an intellectual level, they cannot prove that any of these texts are divinely inspired, nor that any of the people that exist in these texts actually physically existed on the planet. 
So at the end of the day, belief is up to you. That's why it's called belief. And I and, and I'm gonna say this in close. I, I agree with Christians more so when they say Jesus Christ is my personal Lord and Savior because they personalize. Mm -hmm. So by them personalizing it, it it deflects the ability to argue the validity of the existence of the thing when you know that you're only believing it. So that's all I got. Okay. Yeah, so, and my last question was, what is darkness? Because what I've studied, like, I, like a lot of people say, once you try to go to the light, you are finding knowledge. But, but you have to go through darkness to find light, right? Like, like what's your perspective on darkness compared to light? Okay. Like, one is good or, or like, is bad because like I, like I think light is bad and darkness is good. Okay, so uh, when you think of uh, a light, you think of more of illuminating, more of uh, uh, something, something that illuminates. Okay, when you think of light, and but when you look at it from a good and bad point of view, it's neither good nor bad. It's more so energy because you can impart, you can impart negative and positive energy. Wherever you go, you ever been around someone and you say when they leave you, man, they drain me. That's just energy. Is that is what they leaving with you or what they're depositing into you? So what we're looking at is a negative and positive, neither good nor bad. So when a person become enlightened, then they're coming out of darkness versus being in darkness and not being enlightened. OK, so don't look at it from a good or bad perspective. Look at it from a positive and negative perspective, because you can you can. In other words, you can you can always perceive and do what you call good or bad, because what may be good to me may be bad to you. Depends on where you at in this world. Which will be put in a certain perspective with polarity and uh, reality, basically. Yes. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Yeah, duality, duality is an important uh, aspect of understanding human nature and the nature of the creator. Uh, yes, but um, why well, I question so much of my life is because for some reason, just growing up, like I feel like like I've been lied to. Like about each and everything in life. Like well, you I'm have got it. <laughs> unlike, like, like the stuff I've been trained to learn is all false. <laughs> you have. You've been lied to a lot, bro. <laughs> so, like, my question is, on, on like, what type of guidance or what way would I need to go? Because, like, a lot of people they'll tell you, "Oh, yeah, to come join the Masons or to Brotherhood." <laughs> Well, like in Texas, like all type of people have been trying to get me to join something or like join a sorority fraternity or the Mason or the Masons and everything. But my question is, like, for my journey in life to leave this this physical plane, not planet, but plane, um, what would I need to do to help myself or help me on my journey to learn the truth to take with me? Well, would you? I would say this: you're not necessarily looking for truth, but you're looking for facts. Facts uh -huh. is better than truth. And in the, you in, what, sir? I said in your in your life, you're looking for facts, not truth, because I have my truth and you have your truth. But when you're dealing with facts, you cannot dispute that. Okay. Two okay. plus two is four. One plus three is four. No matter how you come up, you're gonna always come up with four. So that's a fact. Okay, so this is what we're looking for. Now, it took me a minute to see it from that point of view because I often thought, well, truth, truth. But everybody has their truth, but when it comes to facts, it's undisputable. Yep. Okay? So in yep. this journey we call Freemasonry, everybody is not going to be where I'm at. Everybody is not going to be where King Musa is at. Okay? So it's a journey. And when you say that you're searching for that which is lost, you're looking for facts. You're not looking, you know, it took me a minute. I'm gonna tell you, it, it took me a minute to be able to gravitate and to pull that out because I've been often told, well, you know, as a man, you don't search for that which is lost. Truth. 
oh no no let's let's that's there's a fact no It doesn't, or, hey, um, young well, man. Trying to seek more, more light, but it, it doesn't end. It doesn't end. It doesn't end until you close your eyes. Yeah. It it doesn't end. It doesn't end. If you are a Mason, looking and searching for that, that which is lost doesn't end. Yeah. What I thought, what I thought three years ago was truth and fact. As I continue to search. Oh man, my whole world's been tossed upside down. And then when I got close to it, it moved. <laughs> it moved. And I'm like, damn, really? You know? So as I began this journey and as I matured in this thing we call Freemasonry in the Order of the Eastern Star, what I used to think, I don't think that way anymore. It continues to evolve and it continues to change. So yeah. you're not just limited to, oh, I'm just going to believe this way and that's it. Because once you get outside your box and see something different, you're going to be at awe. You know, you're going to be at awe because... It's hard to live Go in ahead. the world. Like, like, um, like it's just kind of hard to just fathom that the God that my parents and my family, they taught me to worship the God that created this earth, but each day that we live, or or like you see all these killings and rapings, and like it is pure chaos. Like I don't believe this planet that we live in or world was created by the God that we call um, Christ or whatever. From from my studying and just seeing what's going like going on, like I just feel like the devil or what somebody want to call um, Morning Star. Lucifer, he, <laughs> well, well, like, well, not he, but it would be uh -huh. controlling this whole planet. Like, like, is that Look, the um, truth in that, or if, like, is that fact he, Here's that, the or? thing. Here's the thing. You want to know what God looked like? Look in the mirror. You want to know what mirror. the so-called Satan looked like? Look in the mirror. Now, you have a choice. Are you going to be a God? Or you're going to be that negative energy. Yes, sir. Are you going to build or you're going to tear down? You have that choice. It's called free will. And if you truly have free will, you don't know what tomorrow holds. See, that's the thing about people saying, well, God knew. Well, you know what? If God gave me free will, well, whatever I do, God already knows. Then why do I do the things I do? Truly free. Free will tells you that you're able to change your destination. Free will tells me that I'm able to change and to reconstruct and define who I am. That is free will. Yes, sir. Okay? To be locked in a box and tell me that I can get out is not free will at all. That's slavery. Because you are limited. That's slavery. Absolutely. So you must realize that the Bible that the master had Versus the Bible that the slave had was two different Bibles. Now, if you don't believe that, the fact is, is that it, it, that that's a fact. You could, as a matter of fact, uh, just here recently at the uh, the Smithsonian, Miss Smith's, I'm mispronouncing the word, the museum, Miss Smithsonian Museum. I'm, yeah. Damn, I'm mispronouncing the word. I'm messing yeah. it up. Yeah, the Smithsonian. Right. They have a slave Bible in there. The slave Bible is totally different than what the master had. Okay? So, so we got to look at it. Some of the things that we are taught, like, like take for instance, when you go to a Baptist church, you see the urchins at the door, one hand behind their back, don't you? Okay? I'll tell you what you do. You research why we do that. You'll be surprised. Also, you'll be surprised 
of 619. That's a 601 number. Also, you would be surprised of why we hold one finger up as we're about to walk outside the church. Hold on just a second. I got another call on the line, okay? Okay. Hello? Hey, how you doing, brother? I'm all right. Welcome aboard. You want to, You got something you need to say? Yes, sir. Well, you know, I'm, I'm calling out of Jackson, Mississippi. I'm not a uh, Freemason myself. Jackson, but... Mississippi, my hometown. I saw that six one, that six. I was like, dang, somebody called me from home. Hold on, okay? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Hold on just a second. I've just added another caller on. I hope I ain't losing nobody. Is everybody still online? Yes, I'm here. Okay, the caller from Jackson, Mississippi. You still online? Yes, sir, I'm here. Okay, so I'm going to get back to what I was saying is that when you look at this thing, uh, as, as far as Freemasonry is concerned, we have to understand that Freemasonry, uh, uh, you're supposed to be a free thinker. You're just not locked in some box saying this is it because it's not it. It is truly not it. And this is why we say we are travelers. If you are truly a traveler, everywhere you go, you're going to see something different, experience something different. It's not going to be the same. So I can't take the way I grew up in Mississippi and apply it to the way they do things in California because it's different. I can't take what I, the, the way I've traveled those 89 county, the 89 uh, counties in Mississippi and come to California and realize that the state of California is the same lit, the same width as it is on the West Coast. I can't do it. It's, it's different. So go ahead, my caller from Mississippi. Holler at me. Yes, sir. Well, I was calling because, you know, I always have questions. I'm not amazing myself. But, I'm, you know, I've been around the country. I'm from Michigan originally with my whole family here. Okay. And my great-grandfather was a mason out of Florence here in the city. I'm sure you know what that is. Okay. And, um, you know, most of my friends are masons. But my <laughs> biggest thing, which has been kind of a, a, a stop for me from trying to even join, has been I look at our city. You know, Jackson. You've been here. You're from here. And unlike anywhere else I've lived in the country, Every brother down here is a mason. Of <laughs> oh yeah, baby. You yeah, hey, you everybody. in the south? <laughs> yeah, everybody. And I was just like, man. My problem was I got so many brothers surrounding me that seem to be doing well, but my city's still in this condition. And okay. So for me, that's honestly that's been my biggest drawback from saying I know that a mason is someone worse than his brothers. We're working to make men better. But my city is in really bad shape. Okay. And I got a lot of masons help around the city and everything else. I'm just trying to figure out, I want to be in that picture to help out. But will masonry help me make more of my brothers better? Okay, so this is what's going to happen to you if you're in Mississippi and you want to become a mason. This, this is what's going to happen. A lot of masons in Mississippi are Christians, period, number one. Yeah. So, you, so once you, if you decide to become a mason, you got to come out the box, okay? And understand that masonry is bigger than where you at. It's a worldwide fraternity. It's just not in Mississippi. And when you take on that mentality, when you take on those facts, it's going to change the way you see things. This is why most masons, I would say, that are in politics or whatever, they're able to make the change because they know that it's bigger than where they at. But if you're in Mississippi, oh, my brother. Oh, yeah, I've been over by Jackson State. I know what it looks like over on Highland. Oh, I've been over that way, okay? Uh, over on State Street, you know, but I'm just saying that, yeah, I know a lot of Masons. There was my classmates. There were senators, and they did these things, but they didn't go back. What They, they became selfish, see? They didn't go back and apply the same thing that they was taught in Freemasonry to uplift their community. I'm not saying that it would be your job to do that. I'm just saying this is what we do as Masons, period. You know, that's, that's, that's the cause that's in my heart when I talk to a lot of brothers I, every single day of the week. And uh, that, that's my biggest plight. I say, yeah, I want to I wanna join. My great-grandfather was there, and he did something for my family no one else has, has ever done. And, you know, I, I see I see some brothers doing some good things. I just see, I, I guess in every organization, Got your good folks and you got people who try to take advantage. Oh, yeah, you, you got those. See it all here. 
you get to see it all here in Jackson because you know some people treat it like a frat, like a, a, a traditional party frat, and some people treat it the right way. <laughs> so, you know, that's, that, I, I appreciate what you do with your channel, man, and I watch you all the time, and, mm -hmm. you know, I, I keep leaning that way. And as I make time, I said, once I able to double, dedicate the time, I'm going to step in and see if I can take that step. Well, I'll tell you this. If you choose to take that step, whether you go Prince, I don't care where you go. You need to be the light that they don't see. And when I say the light they don't see, you need to be the example. Even if you're into apprentice. And when you become a when you become an inner apprentice, fellow craft master, they need to see something different than what they've always seen. The parties, the 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 they, they compare themselves to Greeks and all of that. I mean, it's cool to have fun. I never said don't. What I'm saying is that when you do it, there's a certain way to do it. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, I definitely understand. So, like every walk of life, yeah. Absolutely. So, so like myself, I ran for city council here in San Diego. So, I had to be able to present myself in a certain way. So, I could no longer wear all the rings on. Like, I, I got, to, I, I couldn't do it. I had to take them off. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, I had to, I had to shift gears. Yeah. So, is is so when you become a mason, you're gonna shift gears. So I'm just saying, I mean, it would be great. I mean, I, I, I would suggest that you do it. They need to see something other than the party, something other. They need to get a different a different flavor. I would suggest that you do it. Well, I definitely have been leaning that way, man, and watching what you have to say every day. It, it, it helps me lean, man. And, hey, I, 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 may, I may run into you face to face at some point, man. Hey, I I, hey I'll be in Mississippi pretty soon, and I'm going to do a show from there, too. <laughs> All right, hey, I'm gonna hit you up when you get there, and we can link up, and do lunch or something. Hey, I may have to. Yeah, I don't know how far you're gonna be from Tougaloo or Jackson State, but uh, you know, when I get down that way, I'm gonna make it do what it do, baby. Hey, I'm about a half mile from Tougaloo and about two miles from Jackson State. How far from Tougaloo? I'm about a half mile, maybe a mile. I'm right. You know, you're about yeah, I do. Miles. Man, yeah. okay, okay. Hey, what, what do? What, I know I'm changing the show a little bit, but I need to know: is anything still happening down on State Street? Uh, what you mean? You know, is any You know what? I, I just have. I don't even get no Sunday traffic. I'm too grown for that. Okay. Well, hey, say this number. Say this number. Catch me around the uh, lighter part of May. Okay. Okay, the end of May. All right? Most definitely. I will, man. We'll be in touch. All right. I appreciate it. Thanks for calling. Just thank you. Thank you, All right. So, King Moses, you still online? Yes, sir. I'm still All right. Is the other brother still online? I guess he hung up. So, King Moses, go right ahead. Yeah, I was just, uh, I was just listening to that, that conversation. But uh, as as far as that uh, that young brother who got off, I can see that uh, one of the things that's drawn him to Freemasonry is one of the same things that drew me uh, with the with the desire to seek. Um, religious truth and um to, to try to because I, I understand where he's coming from he's coming from the same parallel a lot of young guys in my city come from mm -hmm. uh, because it's a lot of esotericism that existed in uh, chicago so a lot of people understand that um like the first thing people gonna run into is like more is more science gonna run into he you know, already conscious people. And then, you know, we had Fred Hampton's party here in Chicago. So a lot of that stuff is still going on. We got the UNIA. Here Wait a minute, Chicago. whose party? Fred Hampton. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah you know, I'm, I'm 31. Uh, you know, Elder, I just turned 31 on the 28th of April. So, okay. Uh, I used to I used to be a black man. Um, okay, okay, Chicago. okay. And, uh, and I was a part of the FOI. <laughs> At one point, but because I was technically like uh, a Sunni Islam Muslim, um, the way that uh, they taught in the nation was like contradictory to the way I was raised. So although I liked the structure, I didn't like uh, the way they interpreted the Quran from me being born Sunni by saying um, certain things. Like today, I don't have those problems. Like I don't care. But when I was young, I had a problem with a lot of stuff because I was religious mind. Uh -huh. When I came to Freemasonry, I came to free myself from the restrictions on my mind 
because I knew black people was free from slavery physically, but we wasn't free from slavery mentally. And that's and the, the thing that, that, and that's the very thing we deal with today, uh, King Musa, yeah. is the fact that most of us are still mentally enslaved and not and, and not physically slaved. But once yeah. we are able to remove those chains off of our off of our, our mind, man. I'm telling you, this is why my circle, my circle is a small circle because everybody don't want help. You know, sure. everybody don't want to get out the ghetto. And I'm not necessarily saying the physical ghetto. I'm talking about the mind. Everybody is yeah. not ready to let it go. But when you yeah, are like, ready to let it go, it is special. That's true. Because like with my, with, like what I do, I got my own website and everything. And I, I do uh, my website, uh, the non-society.smm.com. And a lot of people who go on my website, they see the mysticism that we teach. They teach, they see, because, you know, non-society houses all of these uh, institutions under one roof. So uh -huh. formally without uh, breaking open the obligation, like we're not meeting as Masons, we're not meeting as Eastern Stars and stuff like that, but we offer... A housing space for if other people from other, you know, crafts want to come in and exchange information based on similarity, kind of like what we do here, but in a physical space. Right. That's what, that's why I started that. So, so uh, one of the so tell me this here, uh, King Musa, what's up with that video you did? Which one? That rap video you did. About uh, which one? Oh, the the, the new one you just put out. Oh man, I, I, uh, you know, I, um, I've been making music for a long time. I didn't know you got down like that until I, until somebody tagged me to one of your videos. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I used to, I, I actually write for a lot of artists. Uh, okay. Yeah, today. So like, yeah, I, I gotta like, like, I kind of stay low key with with things I do and how I move because I'm young and I wanna, I wanna enjoy my, my wealth. <laughs> so yeah, I, I kind of. I kind of stay out of the way, and I, and I make sure I stay within the legal bounds of everything that I do, because I have been locked up before. Um, Freemasonry changed my life. Growing up in Chicago, obviously, like, it wasn't easy. So, like, uh, even though my mom was a preacher and, like, we had money and stuff, I still grew up in the hood. Like, we was the people in the hood that had the little money. Okay. So my mom always had, like, two nice cars. One was always, like, the up-to-date Cadillac. The other one was always, like, a up to date, like lower end type car. Cause my mom was a preacher. She had a, a own church and everything. So right. She had a, she had a little money. So we, but we still lived in Section Eight too. I didn't know none of this growing up. I mm -hmm. just know we lived better than everybody. I didn't know we lived in Section Eight like everybody else. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that uh, my mother was on welfare like everybody else. Even this was this was in like ninety two, ninety three, ninety four. So I didn't know none of that. And then. When my mom lost her church, I didn't know my mom lost her church. So I was almost fourteen. Mm. So a lot of a lot of the stuff that that, that I saw, I got and I accomplished it by coming through the doors of Freemason. Like once, once I I, I, I entered the checker room, I learned a lot about myself. Mm -hmm. And by learning about me, that was the best thing I could have done was learn about me. Once I learned about this vessel, you know, and about this architect, you know, and about this earth, that's when I was able to understand why Freemasonry was beautiful. Because coming out of the black, you know, conscious movement, there's a lot of black brothers that's against Freemasonry. Like, I know I'm so serious, bro. This places, or if you, um, or if you, um, uh, John G. Jones, if you come over there as a black man around some of these Greek fraternities over here, they'll try to fight you. Really? Yeah, because they don't believe that the, that, the, that the Masonic Brotherhood stands for the betterment of black people. Wow. They believe, and and this, is, this is one perspective, just one. So that's one perspective. And me doing what I do, because I do a lot of... Uh, interaction with the youth uh with a guy by the name of tito hardman he used to be the um president of ceasefire in chicago uh -huh. so I used, to, I used to do a lot of work with him and another brother by the name of uh, guillermo gutierrez i used to do a lot of work with him and my job was a gang prevention specialist i would go in 
and talk to the kids because I've been locked up. I've been shot before. I've been and a lot of stuff growing up in Chicago in Humble Park. Bandera, Bandera, like where they gang bang. So like like in my in my neighborhood, when I was growing up, shorties had 30 clips on them. This this was like when I was a junior in high school, like that's the first time I had a, a, a clip for a gun that long. Dang. Yeah, I never knew they made them. Like I, I knew they made drum rolls and stuff like that. Uh-huh. But I didn't know they made them long clips and stuff like that. By the time I was a, a junior in high school, everybody in my neighborhood had a new Sendo clip. Woo! Oh. Real talk. Jeez. Everybody in my neighborhood had a new Sendo. So they called me Smart G. So I gangbang. I was a gangster disciple. So when by me being a uh, gangster disciple, they called me G anyway. So. I used to always be into like esoteric symbolism and all of this stuff since I was a kid. Well, so when, when I looked at the Masonic body, I seen structure and discipline and I was like, I want that. Well, tell me this here, and, and this may be for another show. Because you was in that life at one time, is, uh-huh. there, is there some similarities between what may oh, yes. oh, okay. Very much. Okay. 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 Yes, yes. I, I won't even. I, I was gonna say that for another show, but that's that's one of the reasons why I was so drawn to Freemasonry. Being a, a gangster disciple from Chicago in particular, uh, Jeff Fort, who started the Black Peace Stone Rangers, right, or the All or the Almighty Black Stones, right. He he was a Moor. And, really? And, and uh, yes, he was a Moor. The first temple that was ever raised here in Chicago was um, a Noble Drew Ali temple. Under the Black Peace Stone Rangers, they was they was Moabites. They used to walk around Jeff uh, Jeff Fort and Larry Hoover. They used to all walk around with our bush on their head, what they call a fez. They used to all walk around with those on, and they were and you know uh, that's why they call gangster disciples bricks because it used to be twenty one main chiefs to a pyramid, and it's twenty one main chiefs within that pyramid that governs the uh, the, the uh, crime the crime life in the city basically. And Jeff Fort had connections with Muammar Gaddafi. That's how he ended up getting locked up. Because wow. he was buying what they said weapons of mass destruction. And his, his influence on Chicago was a super impact. If, and, and being a gangster disciple, uh, they teach us that uh, Black Peace Stones is not. So I always knew that Jeff Fort and Larry Hoover was brothers. They didn't have the same issues that these kids had with each other as Black Stones and Gangster Disciples. Well, you Jeff know what? Fort, you you you, you very close. You're giving a lot of information, but that's that that subject this subject right here is definitely built for another show. I am telling you, Freemasonry and 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 and, and, and uh, uh uh I don't know what Freemasonry organized, organized because being from Chicago, we don't have gangs. This is why they compare us, us, our city in particular, to Freemasonry. The game structure that we created in the 50s, which is what overlapped into places like California, Texas, Mississippi. That's why when you go down south, there's so many Chicago gangs down. It is. It is. Jeff, Jeff and Larry Kent, the whole family come from the south. You know, the majority of people from Chicago, from Mississippi, Alabama, and Memphis. That's yep. where they come from. So when, when we come up, we either go to Detroit, Chicago, or Indiana. So the majority of the it's a lot that Freemasonry offers to the inner uh, to be uh, seen as the brotherhood. Wow. Why? Because so, that structure is very similar. So so you know what? We really got to hit on that on another show, bro. I'm telling you. That that right there, Freemasonry and Games. Ooh, that that's one of the reasons I get booked in Chicago a lot to speak because of my experience in gangs and the fact that I am a Mason. People people like to to have me come out and teach the kids. And then what it do? It take them young boys' minds out of gang banging, and they be wanting to be like because you know they associate everything Illuminati and Freemason with Jay Z, Rick Ross, and stuff like that. So they like. <laughs> If that's what that did for this man right here standing in front of me, this little five foot six brown eyed dude talking, mm-hmm. and he got the type of money he got at 31 years old, right? And he not doing nothing illegal, he only uh, applicating his mind in a certain area. Oh my god, 
Mm. That's why all the elders like me. Like, I do music with King Burt, who wrote a book about his former life as a pimp. Oh. I got a video with him. I got a few videos with another, with a, with a lot of guys. One brother started the New Order of the Illuminati. Hold, hold on just a second, brother King Musa. Uh, Traveler Man said, did you say that Larry Hoover was a Moor? Yes, I did say Larry Hoover was okay, a Moor. Okay, so uh, Traveler Man, he said that Larry Hoover was a Moor. How true is that? I don't know. He's in Chicago. That's so, an actual fact. I stand on that as a gangster disciple former member who, who was a lit coordinator. It was my job to teach the history and literature whoosh. of the nation. Well, that was my position. Well, I tell you what, you I hold fact, you, you hold that position because that's gonna have, bro. I'm telling you, that's gonna have to be for another show. What's the day? The day is everybody in Chicago. You can listen, Elder Tony. I'm very well known for public speaking here, especially when it comes to this topic in particular. Okay. Game. So, like people who book me through Tito Ortiz and uh, Guillermo Gutierrez, those are the people who know my my background and they know that I'm. That I'm proficient in my information. And it's the older gangsters that come from the old school that be like, who taught him what he knows? But then what a lot of people don't know is that people like Willie and them that started, Willie Lord and them, all of them guys was basically like my uncles. Like I told you last time, my mom has, she just got 30 years sober on um, April 4th. Congratulations. So, yeah, so my mom, my mom, she 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 was in in a, in, a, in an area with all of them brothers when they was coming out of the joint because a lot of them had heroin and crack addictions. And my mother, being a counselor at the time, was helping a lot of these guys get over their addictions. Me not knowing who they were, I didn't know these was chiefs and starters of my uh, of these former street gangs in Chicago. Well, I didn't know I'm, that. I'm gonna I'm gonna say this here. Jay Z is not a Mason, okay? That's right. I just I just want to point point that out real quick so nobody gonna get no headache. Jay Z is not a Mason. Now, if he belongs to a Prince Hall Lodge or a mainstream lodge, I I I, I no. Yeah, Jay Z not a Mason. And just so like KRS One, KRS One is not a Mason. KRS One is definitely not a Mason. Uh, a lot of again, a lot of those brothers they they study the, the public Masonic information and then they they regurgitate as if they, they are issues, and I think that's a big problem with the internet and the, the type of access that people have to the sacred information because they're not applicated. You don't learn true principles of Freemasonry if you're not in an environment where it has to be applicated. Like these you're not, kids, and not only that, you're not going to get it if you haven't been initiated, passed, or raised. I don't yeah. care what you tell me. Yep. The experience and that's why I'm saying this, an environment of application. Oh, certainly, certainly. You can read all the books you want to, but unless you have experienced it, when I say experience, I mean gone through it. Yep. It ain't, it ain't going to mean nothing to you. You can read every book you want to read. Yeah, and I, I've had people try, like, especially, like, when, like, if you ever been, like, in a prison system, like, that's another thing I'm trying to get into, like, uh, the prison ministry type of thing, but teaching more uh, metaphysical, esoteric type of stuff with a particular format and curriculum that I've been creating for the last three years. So like that's my that's my whole plan to like get in and and and, and get to the youth that's in the prison system. Because mm -hmm. those are our warriors. That's our warrior class. That's our that's our next economic base. But they have uh no guidance. That's like in Chicago, it was like uh it was like seven yeah it was like it was like seven hundred kids or something like that. Wow. Down, well, yeah, I, downtown in Chicago. Well, I'll Nowhere tell you what, there's some there's one brother, brother uh uh Belton is trying to hook up with you. He left his number there, so he wants you to definitely give him a call. Okay, cool. All right, he says he runs a radio station in Louisiana, so big shout out. Most definitely because uh these youth these youth need a need something to go. And when I was growing up, I graduated high school in two thousand and six. When I was growing up, um the, the, the high school graduation rate was just starting to stop for black people. Mm. Uh, I was the last generation, and I always say this in my little lectures, I'm like, I was the last generation that seen men, like fathers and stuff like that. I think what crack did to them, but I seen the fathers fight through that too. 
I think the wow. black men are strong too. I remember when black police officers used to police our neighborhood and didn't lock nobody up. They took guns and weed and took their money and sent them on their way and, and told them, if I catch you again next time, you're actually going to go to jail for something that I should have took you to jail for the first time. And, mm. and you know, this is the type of relationship that kept a lot of us out of trouble. That's why I didn't go to, I didn't get arrested for the first time until I was 19. Wow. I was already in school in college by that time. I got uh I was going to Urbana in Champaign. I was I was actually in school back home visiting and got locked up. Mm. Being with my homies out there gangbang. Well I'm gonna so I'm, 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 I'm gonna say this here. We got about maybe 40, 40 seconds to go and then we're gonna call it a night. But uh go ahead and uh leave leave us a brief drop a jewel on us for night and we're gonna call it. Go ahead, drop some knowledge on us. Yeah, most definitely. I just uh, thank the elders for always letting me uh, speak my piece. And um, just, you know, if, you, if you're if interested in, like, any of the stuff, you know, uh, as far as, like, correspondence between, like, certain information of, of our brotherhood and then, like, other organizations that I like to call uh, uh, sub-Masonic organizations, like, they not Mason uh, organizations, but I think they're strongly Masonic influenced. I call them sub-Masonic uh, organizations. I think people should start studying them so they can learn some of the more esoteric aspects that people took directly out of Freemasonry and applicated it to other stuff. I got I got one question for Brother Craig Blayton, uh, Belton, Brother Belton. Do me a favor, Brother Belton, if you're still online tonight and you can hear me. Give me a call after the show. Is that possible? Could you please post whether you can give me a call after the show, please? I certainly would appreciate it. So, look, I'm going to go ahead and log off tonight. But as I say always, please, whatever you do, uh, stay out the bushes and keep your light on. And I want to say thanks to everyone for calling in tonight. I certainly appreciate it. And I definitely look forward to uh, hearing from you real soon. And, Brother King Musa, we're going to do that show on uh, on uh, Freemasonry and, uh, and games. How about that? Okay, cool. Uh, just uh, I'll text you and then I'll, I'll let you know when I'm available. Okay, okay, okay. I appreciate that. And like I said, if the brother uh, from King David Grand Lodge out of Lafayette, if he's still on, uh, give me a call, 619-985-1184. This goes out to the brother from King, uh, I think that's King David Grand Lodge, all right? So everybody have a good night. Peace and be well until we're able to see each other again. God bless you. And always keep your light on and stay out the bushes. I'm out. Thank you. King Musa, thanks, bro.